All right, welcome everybody to our very exciting second installment of the Permission to Do You in your marketing series. I'll give everybody a couple of minutes just to jump on. I'll do a quick, 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 brief, quick introduction of all of our lovely panelists that I have joining me today. Um, and if you are joining us live, please feel free to let us know that you're here. Uh, we're streaming live on Facebook. So if you're joining us from Facebook, say hello in the comments. If you're joining us from Zoom, please say hello there. Just a reminder for our folks on Zoom, we are recording this and it's going to end up on YouTube. So if you don't want your face on YouTube, don't share your camera. <laughs> If you don't mind with your face being on YouTube, I don't mind either, um, but it's up to you. So you make that call. Um, if you share your voice, but not your video, your face won't end up on YouTube either. So you can always chat when we have Q&A at the end. Um, all right. So for those of you who don't know me, I am Tracy Borison. I am what I lovingly call myself a mompreneur because I never even dreamed of starting my own business until I became a mom and I became a brand identity coach. So now I'm a brand identity coach. What I wanted to do with this series is bring together a variety of different people um, to give you their different perspectives of what it looks like to give yourself permission to do you in your marketing. So there's a lot of outside factors that might be trying to convince you that they have the best way for you to do your marketing. And what we have here is a whole panel of people who believe that there's a way for you to do it so it feels right for you. And that's also the reason why there's so many different types of marketing strategies and tactics that are available. Um, so I also want to welcome my lovely panel. So, and we're very international today. I'm super excited about this. So we, I'm going to start with Zoe just because Zoe is my fellow Canadian. Um, so Zoe representing the East Coast of Canada because we're big. Uh, <laughs> Zoe, would you like to give yourself a little brief intro? Sure. Uh, my name is Zoe. I am the CEO of a marketing agency called Schmooze Media. We're located in Toronto. And what we do at Schmooze that's a little bit different is we have a lot of focus on education and parenting brands as anything to do with learning. And I'm happy. I was a kindergarten teacher before I started my agency. And, uh, you know, everything we do is with core values in mind and very heart centered. So thank you for having me. So excited to meet you all. Awesome. Thank you. And I was going to say, let's just work in one direction, but that we don't, we have two different directions. We're, <laughs> I should have started in Australia and moved ourselves across. So let's jump to Justine, who is representing us from the Southern Hemisphere. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me here, Tracy. And I'm calling you from the future because I'm ahead, a day ahead of everyone. So I can tell you that creating brands and giving people their own voice looks pretty good in the future. <laughs> Um, my background is also advertising and I've spent over 20 years working in corporate advertising and then I realized that I really didn't enjoy giving the power of voice to corporate companies and there's a lot more fun doing that for startups, small companies and heartfelt individuals. So my work really revolves around igniting that inner essence and that inner voice as Tracy so beautifully says in everyone. So it's a pleasure to be with you all. Thank you. Thank you, Justine. And I'm only assuming it looks so bright for brand voices in the future because everybody's listened to this conversation and is so enlightened. <laughs> All right, let's keep moving that way. We're getting into later this day. Um, Kate, welcome, Kate, representing the UK. Uh, from the UK. Evening. Feel a bit like the Eurovision Song Contest. Um, I'm Kate, and I am a I'm a marketing mentor, but focusing on brands and building brands for people. Um, a bit like you, Tracy, I hadn't really thought about starting my own business until after I had kids. I worked part time and then I just realized where I was working just wasn't igniting that passion. It wasn't making me happy. So I took voluntary redundancy, realized that I do still love marketing and brands and then decided to set up on my own. And I work with like you guys I work with small businesses who are focused on on making a real difference having a real impact on the world um, and help them to just 
find their voice, find who they want to be and get it out there because everyone has that voice and that it's important. So yeah, that's me. Thank you, Kate. And last but not least, representing our, what do we call it? Balkans. The Balkans, yeah. <laughs> Alexandra, hit it. Yeah, thank you, Tracy. Th thank you for having me here. Uh, I'm Alexandra. I'm uh, founder of a boutique digital marketing agency for three years now. Um, but in, I'm in marketing for 10 years. It's a decade <laughs> for now, uh, coming here from business studies. So I always wanted to uh, have marketing uh, impact on, on business. And that's what I was lacking in my digital agency where, you know, uh, clients always focused on uh, advertising and only promotional activities. So uh, lately in the past year, I was uh, pivoting my role to uh, this consulting thingy, <laughs> I call it, uh, where, where I help uh, clients finding their uh, differentiating genius. Um, because uh, when we focus only on advertising, we are, we are going in the same direction as everyone else and we lose our, ourselves. Uh, so I, I thought that we need to get step, step back and uh, talk with clients to find uh, their unique voice, what all of you are doing. So yeah, I'm in a good company. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. So we're going to start our panel discussion today. Each of our panelists is just going to share a moment that really resonates for you in your journey of discovering your personal brand. And like, so something that really said to you, like, oh, this isn't it, or oh, this is it. Um, I'm going to start again with Zoe, just because we recently talked about this, <laughs> and give everybody else a second to just get your thoughts together. Sure, no problem. Uh, so I, I never, you know, showed up in this world intending to be an entrepreneur. I thought my life path was to be a teacher and that's what my entire resume looked like. Um, so swimming lessons and arts and crafts camp and tutoring and, you know, volunteering in classrooms. That's, that's who I was. That was my most likely to, you know, just change the world in the classroom and feed people with her leftovers. Cause I always had a lot of leftovers, very large lunches. Um, so, you know, it was, it was never in my mind. Also my family is made up of a lot of entrepreneurs. So I was like, Oh, that's for them. You know, it's not for me. And, you know, I was really unhappy teaching. And I thought this is the only way I can do good in the world. Being a corporate sellout is not interesting to me. Um, you know, there's, there's this, this belief, this limiting belief that I think a lot of people hold that you can't do good if you're making a lot of money. And so teachers don't make a ton of money. And, you know, and in, in my entrepreneurship journey as well, it's been hard to say, I want to raise my prices. Um, but what I've learned as I've, uh, you know, as I've grown, um, you know, long, long story short, I went to do my master's in business after I left teaching and I fell in love with basically telling everybody that what they were talking about made no sense and we need to be more clear and uh, accessible to more humans, real humans, not just like, I have a prototype and it's going to be great. Um, but I really, I really felt passionately like, wow, marketing is the intersection of business and education. We get to teach people about new potential and new opportunities. And then realizing that, you know, now I have 12 full-time employees and a growing agency and a, ch you know, a child and another one on the way. If I don't get fair money and fair value for, for what I'm doing, then I can't employ people at fair wages. I can't give back. I can't make the world a better place. So, um, you know, just a big aha for me in my business journey has been, I can still be me. I can still do good. And I can be a badass entrepreneur <laughs> all at the same time. I hope that answers your question. And I think that's, 
Yeah, I think that's an important point for everybody because I think at certain points of our lives, we all assume that this is who we are. And I like to call it personal brand misalignment. Those times or those experiences that you have where you're just like, ugh, that feels bad. Or like somebody, if you're working for an organization, you, you get assigned a task and you're just like, oh no, like I wouldn't do that, right? Like that's not, I feel like super good about that. I got all that personal brand misalignment. That's your personal brand telling you that that's not what you would do. And we don't actually have very good practices of listening to that inner voice. Um, if, I, if, I can, voice. if I can as well, by being a leader to other people, you know, to say I am a founder or a CEO who spends the time reflecting on what it means to me to show up in the world in the way I want to, you're going to bring people along with you for that ride. And I always kind of make this comparison to my team that like, this is the schmooze classroom. If it doesn't feel like your values align with this classroom, there's a lot of other classrooms out there. And um, that's why it's so important to know who you are and where you're headed so you can have the right people on the bus with you. Yes, love that. Love, love, love. Thank you, Zoe. Okay, anybody chomping at the bit to go next on sharing their story? Kate. Oh, <laughs> you guys raised your hand at the same time. Kate, go ahead. It's like school, thinking about teaching. Um, I've realized that my calling in life was not to be a teacher, having home, tried to homeschool my children over the past three months. Year, actually. Um, yeah, not my thing. Definitely. But I did, I was actually applying to be a teacher, but I literally had a, a choice between a year out where I was going to become a teacher. And then I took an interview at a PR agency. So I was 21, that's nearly 20 years ago. And realized that this was it. This was what I wanted to do. This was, and, and the teaching place went out the window. So over my career, I've done PR, I've done internal comms, I've written websites, I've created campaigns, I've cr written radio jingles. Um, I've even planted trees for corporate social responsibility, volunteering things that I've done. And I loved it. I, I, I really did. Up until October, or no, summer of 2019, where the organisation I was in was going through a massive restructure. And they were offering voluntary redundancy. And I took a step back and thought, I don't love this anymore. I don't love what I'm doing. And I'm not that half-assed kind of person. I am a full throttle, full energy kind of person. And if I don't love it, not much point in doing it. So I took voluntary redundancy, decided what I was going to do with my life when I grew up. And then realized that I had 20 years of marketing. I have 20 years of building my own brand, you know, knowing who I am. And I can put that into practice working with other people, helping them, mentoring them to really find who they are, find their passion, find their love. And that, that to me was my, my light bulb kind of moment of, I can do hands-on marketing, but I love working with people and I love talking to people. I've been accused of being too, um, not being professional enough because I'm so friendly and enthusiastic, but that's me that's my brand and if you don't like it you are not my people you are not my person so there are people that do I've got plenty of people in my tribe who do like this energy level I'm just drinking a coffee at seven o'clock at night is probably not the best plan um so you know that is my kind of personal brand and, and me the fact that I've thought about it now and I know this is what I want to do I love that so much, Kate, because when I met you, I was like, oh, my people, because <laughs> I'm like that too. I've got the high energy and the enthusiasm. Uh, enthusiasm is a word people always use to describe me. And it was funny because I didn't really realize that was a very big piece of my personal brand until I went through the Dale Carnegie program. I did the Dale Carnegie course, and there's this module where you have to show appreciation for the other members who are in the program so you have to like write this little note and say what you appreciate about it and every single person put enthusiasm 
on mine. And I was like, hmm, maybe that's a thing <laughs> that's <laughs> for me. And like living into that is so empowering though. And that's, again, one of those things and one of the reasons behind these types of conversations is knowing those things about yourself gives you the opportunity to fully embrace that. And yes, there are people who I got distracted by the puppy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> look how cuddly um, there are people who are your people and will love you for being exactly the way you are and there are people who won't but those aren't your people and we're not all trying to talk to 8 billion people in this world if we could all just make a lasting impact on the group of people we truly resonate with then we have this domino effect that can make a huge impact all over the world. Like I say to clients, when they are worried that their subscriber list is going down, you like celebrate the unsubscribes because they are making way for the people who really want you. And they're going to be, they have space to come into your world. Mm hmm. <laughs> and actually the last time someone told me that I was like I am actually everybody's worst nightmare because I sign up for every email list and then never opt out <laughs> I just like stay on there and don't open your emails <laughs> I'm the worst um okay let's hop to Justine yeah I love this conversation because this whole thing with likes on Facebook and on Instagram on every other platform we've gotten ourselves into this scarcity mindset, you know, quality, sorry, getting more quantity versus quality. Like half the people, more than half the people that subscribe to mailing lists and stuff like that never open the emails. I mean, honestly, we've got the whole thing wrong. And you're so right, Kate, rather get people to unsubscribe and make room for that one person that, that's actually gonna read your stuff. And I, and I look at this um, and I speak of this whole sort of approach to branding is really finding your true love. And I love your question, Tracy, because I think when you it, finding what it is that you want to do is like finding your true love. And sometimes you might think, you know, through our life journey, oh, this isn't mine. This isn't mine. If you let it go and it comes back to you, it is meant to be yours. <laughs> That's a little bit of my story. I fell into marketing because it was the thing to do, or it was the course in uni that I really enjoyed and kind of followed that path into advertising. And I was lucky enough to work in one of the biggest advertising agencies in the world. And I worked with pro corporate clients like Procter and Gamble and Ray-Ban and you know, tons of others. So kind of learned all the structures and all the big processes and they were so it was great great foundational sort of understanding but it got to a point where they were just so tediously long and drawn out and oh my god are we ever going to do any work or we're we just going to talk strategy and we're going to be talking about this like when are you going to start doing this but it's amazing how important those foundations are so in my journey i got to the point of and that happened around having kids as well it was like oh my God, I'm part of the problem on this planet where I'm helping or telling people to buy more stuff. I'm part of the problem of consumerism and everything winds up in the landfill. I can't be doing this anymore. It's not in my own integrity. And I left um, advertising and thought, what am I going to do next? So I got myself certified as a yoga teacher, never taught a day of yoga in my life, ended up doing a um, transformational coaching certification and a light bulb went off and I realized I actually love this. I love helping others, but not in sort of their personal life, but just to find that inner light that we all have and then helping these people, you know, give them the tools how to go out and shine that light into the world. So that love of marketing and creating and co-creating with others came back to me. In the moment that I let it go and I turned my back and I said, nah, this isn't mine to do anymore. It actually came back to me, but it came back in a different form, in a form that's more empowering. And funny enough, my mother's a teacher and I, and I said, I'd never, I would never teach in my life. And what I'm doing right now is teaching. So it all, it all comes back in full circles. 
I love this theme of teaching <laughs> here today. I didn't even know that was going to happen. That's fun. Um, I love what you said, Justine, about the true love, right? Um, I use this analogy all the time with my clients is that every person, if, if every other person in the world was perfect for you, like your spouse was, and maybe we have different levels of perfect we think our spouses are for us, but um, the, the, the concept of a true love in terms of your soulmate, right? Like that exists in a business sense too, in a client sense too, and only by showing up as you truly are, that's what gives you the easiest opportunity to find those other people and to filter out those people who are just going to be unsubscribes. I love that. Okay, wrap us up. Alexandra, you got something you're going to say about teaching? <laughs> yeah, actually, I do. <laughs> I do teach marketing uh, at the university here at, at, in Belgrade. Uh, it's, it's a small university and I have marketing studies there. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> apparently this is a theme. <laughs> Uh, I love how, how you all said uh, this about love, about um, finding who, who you are. Uh, that's, that, that also happened to me. Like, uh, I, was all, I was always questioning uh, who am I and also who am I to this world. And uh, this questioning becomes like having a peak in four years in my life. So... Um, before studies, I was like, oh, am I going to go to psychology or, or uh, management studies? And I was practical and went to management. After finishing studies, I was like, am I going to be HR? Because I knew that I will do something with people, but I didn't know what. Like, am I going to be HR or PR? In that time, PR was, uh, was a thing. And I went to PR after four, four years and was like, am I going to stay in the company or go to the agency? So uh, I had this cycle of uh, reinventing myself in four years. And uh, like the third cycle was in the, in the last year when I was like, uh, do I love this job that I'm doing in this digital marketing agency? I was questioning because we had some problems with clients like, um, they didn't know who they are and they were and they were trying um, asking from us to find their authenticity without telling us anything like just go there be authentic authentic in, in our name and that was hard you know because you you cannot be authentic authentic for someone else and and i was like uh, do i love this job and then i realized that you know, I just maybe don't love people that I'm working with in that moment. <laughs> and uh, also there, there was another thing. I was always a good listener uh, and people just open up in front of me, whether I ask or not, I just have this face, like tell me everything. And when you work in a small agency, uh, you have this billable, billable and non-billable hours. And when you are a good listener and when people are just, uh, you know, spilling their souls in front of you, you cannot tell like, oh, I have to go because this is a non billable hour for me. I have to have my business. And I realized that I have to change something, that I have to uh, create business around this listening thing. And that's how I, I went in this um, uh, finding out your true true differentiator uh, and creating my uh, framework for that. And the agency is doing its stuff. It has clients, but I'm pivoting my role. Luckily, I have uh, great people that I work with. Uh, so th the thing that you all mentioned is like finding who you are and how it resonates with the market. Because Sometimes it's not cool to be who you are if you cannot live from it. So you have to, to find this balance and uh, you, you have to question yourself from time to time because I know that this that I'm doing right now, I don't know if I'm going to work uh, that in four years because I will grow, my ambitions will grow. Maybe I change, you know, 
the whole myself, you know, the body is changing in, in each, each organ has its cycle. Uh, why don't we as a, as a whole being don't, don't accept that? Because sometimes I just feel that people are trying to catch on something and like stay there for the rest of their lives. And that's, that's wrong. And especially in this time where everything is changing. I love that you shared that, Alexandra, because your personal brand does change and grow and yeah. evolve as you, I, like so many of us have spoken today about the, what was different for us after we had kids, right? Like in some of those things, you can't even anticipate until you're in the moment, right? So like you can't you don't know what that's going to be like. And then you have two kids instead of one. And you're like, wow, <laughs> now that's different again. And even just like you have different experiences, like all these different types of experiences and you meet different people and they impact you in different ways. And you're right. It is a natural evolution and, and physically we naturally evolve and mentally and emotionally we evolve. And so trying to say that, who I am today is who I'm always going to be is just kind of folly. <laughs> like it's not, it's just not a thing. And also I really love that too, because the space, like one of the things we're trying to talk about here is, is creating a self, a space for yourself to give yourself permission, right? Give yourself permission to grow and evolve and embrace that as a beautiful change instead of saying like, Oh, now I'm, this and like quite honestly this happens to a lot of people in motherhood is they're just like oh I just like I don't like this I don't like this and now my kids are always everywhere and blah there's so many more empowering and more powerful things that you have as well now in a new stage of life and so being able to embrace that and say like hey this makes me so much better at being able to do this next version of me. Actually, one of my favorite things that I love to say when I'm like kind of stuck in a problem and I, I don't know how to figure it out, I assign it to future Tracy <laughs> because future Tracy will be much better situated to deal with that problem than current Tracy is. <laughs> and so we'll just leave that for her for later. <laughs> She'll figure it out. But it also gives you like really great trust in yourself and embracing the fact that I know I'm going to be knowing, growing. I know I'm going to be learning. And in the future, I'm totally going to be able to figure that out. Today, maybe not so much. <laughs> oh, man, so many great things happening here today. So what I also want to give all of our panelists, oh, one reminder, this is Q&A as well for our panelists. So now that you guys know a little bit about all of our panelists, and again, our, our focus for today is creating that space for you to find permission to use your own voice, use your authentic voice. So if you guys have any questions for our panelists uh, around that, please feel free. If you're on Zoom, post them in the chat. If you're on Facebook, you can post them in the comments. I'm watching those comments as well. And while we're waiting for any questions to come in, I would love for our panelists to give everybody just some kind of tip. So it could be from your own experience, again, something that worked really well for you. It could be something that you recommend for your clients. What is something that people are on this call and watching the replay can do to really embrace their unique voice? Does anybody want to go first? Yes, Justine's all over it. <laughs> no, I just, I just love when you, oops, I just love when you talk about voice because that's something that I, that I use a lot when I, um, with one-on-one -on -one coaching clients. And it's something that came to me through my transformational coaching. So just as you're, and it beautifully um, weaves into what you were just talking about, tapping into your future self. Well, we as women are also very good into tapping into our younger selves, <laughs> which is not always very good. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's, especially when we're retired, overwhelmed, it's, it's that voice in us that wakes up and says, ah, you're not good enough, or you're not going to get this done. And it's, and it's the younger self really waking up in us and, and it's that younger memory. And we need to speak to that voice with our powerful current self or our powerful future self and kind of say, hey, honey, you know, I, I, I could hear you, but you've got this. And when, when I speak with them, um, when I coach a lot of my one-on-one -on -one clients, there's an energy shift that happens 
when you're in that, oh, I don't know how to do this, I'm overwhelmed, there's this, there's that, nobody likes me, you know, whatever it is, I don't have enough likes, I don't have enough this, I've put my work out there, nobody's responding, whatever it is, there's a different energetic frequency that comes from that voice. After working with that person, when you when you when they're in there, in their in their strength, in their what I call their their essence, they're truly connected to their essence. Their voice changes. Oh my goodness, it's this. I know what the next step is. This is what my brand is. This is what my voice is. This is what I'm here to do. So I always record that session or that that section, and I always say to them, whenever you're in doubt. Or when you're losing that path, just listen to your own voice, your powerful voice of your true self. Because in that moment and that frequency and the way you speak with the more assertive, this is mine to do. And there's a different energy. And I honestly believe that we all, as, as, as parts of nature, we all have our unique frequency. And so when we're not in our pure essence and we're in that sort of, you know, other factors are, are affecting us, that frequency changes, our aura changes, or, you know, we become small, we become whatever. But when you're in that, and it's not about, um, I make it the distinction about confidence and, you know, cockiness. Confidence for me is when it comes from the heart. Cockiness is when it comes from here. <laughs> And you're like, me, 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 me. That's being cocky. When you're truly confident in who you are and what you're doing, it comes from, from a deeper place. And when your voice comes from that place as well, there's a, there's a unique frequency that you then hear and others hear. That's when others hear your voice. When you're speaking from that place. Oh, that is so good. <laughs> I guess the the funny thing is, is I don't, I don't know if you guys were paying attention, but like that, I felt like you were speaking, Justine, from, from that place and the frequency in this entire, it's, sometimes I feel like it's weird because we're all like, we're, we're, we're all over the world, right? We're, we're on a digital medium. And I, I think a lot of times people are concerned that things like that don't transfer over a digital medium, but like, you guys just look at what happened. Like, I, I don't know about you guys, but I was like, whew, it's like our hearts were connected. Um, and that that's just a beautiful thing. I also love your definition, the difference of confidence versus cocky on the heart versus the head. Love that. That's going to be a tweetable moment, everybody. I just need <laughs> and to Zoe raised in. her hand. Yes, I saw that. I need to jump in because I have a, a very... Um, a different experience in 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 my in my work um in that i i don't do one-on-one -on -one coaching i work with large corporate groups so my agency handles you know strategy and ongoing content creation and at the beginning uh, myself and other members of my team run core values workshops with the corporations that we work with and it's really, really interesting listening to what Justine was saying. And then, you know, again, going back to being a teacher, how did, how did I develop something that could allow a room of, you know, 15, 20, 60 year old men to <laughs> drop their guard and talk about why they show up to work every day? And what about this company makes things special? So when I do these workshops, it's usually 10 people at a time and often you know, three to 10 groups of like, let's say the company, most of our clients are between 25 and 70 employees. And so that would mean, you know, two to 10 workshops per company before we start representing their voice on social media. And um, it's so interesting. First of all, I no longer work with anyone who isn't willing to do that type of thinking and show their team that core values work is integral to the entire community. Um, like they have to make that investment in some way, shape or form before we can represent them on social media. Um, but also, you know, saying, okay, here's the group. And this group of 10 has five women and five men. And the next group has eight men and two women. And the next group is all men. Had you like, uh, and, and without fail, I tend, especially when it was in person, now I do it virtually too, but 
I get these people on their hands and knees, like organizing core values, words into different structures and like really like tactile, hands on. And, and what I would say is that people are these guiding these guiding principles um, as a company, whether that's coming only from the individual or from the team as a combined effort. And once it becomes a larger team, I would suggest making sure that your employees' voices are part of setting the tone and the guidepost for the way, like they're the ones talking to the customer and you're not anymore. You need to have that included. Um, so again, like these people are showing up every day to represent your brand. Um, why do they think they're showing up? Uh, you know, and, and what's going to make them continue to show up because you want your voice to be um, reflected in a way that you're proud of. And that means you have to do the work to hear other people too. So it's, it's interesting how it kind of moves and weaves from hearing your own voice and then trusting that the people who are on your team have heard that voice and have, you know, taken ownership of, ship of it in their own way. Um, and I could talk for ages about you know, the learnings from those core values workshops and, and these, these people saying, wow, we did eight different groups doing these core values workshops and the same word showed up 78 times. It's mind blowing and incredible. Well, and I would say that that's, that is the heart of, of a brand, right? I got you, Kate, coming to you next. Um, that's the heart of a brand because a lot of times, especially on the corporate side, people have these fluffy value statements that they put on the wall about what their core values is, making everybody really angry with that one. But you know that it's true. Like so many people have these and then you could theoretically get people in a room and they have no idea or they just like say the values, but the values don't like live in the business, right? Like I think that's another big one too. And so like, I love that. Like when you are in a place, when you have done your job, because as a human, you're very unique and nobody's going to be like a hundred percent aligned with what your voice is going to say, but getting a team and whether that team is an organization, a community group, a family, right? Like as long as you guys are working within the same like meandering river of values, you can go so much farther, so much faster. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that, Zoe. All right, Kate. Kate's chomping at the bit. It's just part of what Zoe was saying and part of what Justine was saying in terms of I work with one-on-one -on -one clients, mentoring them, helping them build that strategy and detangling the whole mass. But one of the exercises that we do is that whole long list of adjectives. And I try and get people to sort them into where they are now, where they want to go, and what they definitely don't want to be. So you really think, you know, is it playful? Are you elegant? Are, you know, sophisticated? What kind of, what kind of authentic, authenticity do you want to project out into the world? But I quite often find when people are saying what they want to be, they're actually already there. It's just that imposter syndrome playing in the background, and they just haven't stepped into it yet and they they know that that's where they want to go but they they're just not taking hold of their power and being more aware of it so it's just that really thinking about who you are who you want to be who future Kate is you know that kind of thing I love that too because there's I think there's still a little bit of this stuckness and that who we are today is who we are going to be Right. It's actually funny because I was writing a blog post this weekend and I'm I'm not a huge supporter of like all of the strength profilers and stuff. Like I'm going to tell you who you are. You're an I J N. I'm sorry. I'm going to screw it up because <laughs> I don't actually know what it is. Um, I'm an extrovert. I'm that. But like so there's all of these boxes that people can put you into. And these tests are there are certain kind of boxes and there's some freedom in knowing those things about yourself except the thing is is that's a measurement of who you have been right and that doesn't mean that you can't be somebody else or show up that different way right like what is 
future you. I always say this to like so many people that if you met me when I was six years old, I was like the shyest. I remember being like petrified once because my parents told me at like we were at a taco restaurant and I had to go ask for my own ketchup if I wanted ketchup. And I remember just standing there looking at the lady like, I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> so these are not like things that are necessarily naturally ingrained in who you are. It's about where you find that power. Like I love how Justine used the word vibration, right? Like it's love where you, it's where you find that. And it can be found in different places. And then once you find it, you can harness it and turn it into that capacity to show up wherever you are. Oh, you guys, this is pretty good. Alexandra, I'm sure you've got something good too. <laughs> well, uh, I was thinking about uh, the impact of stories because uh, everything that you were talking about is either a story that we tell to ourselves or a story that we hear that someone is telling and then we are just, you know, take it. <laughs> take it because we don't know who we are. Um, and uh, th there is a great uh, workshop with, with a client that I'm, that, that, it's the first workshop that I do when I start working with a client is uh, we dwell into their stories and uh, we ask employees and found we ask them to, gather as much people as they can, um, but not more than 15 because you cannot work with, at least I cannot work with, uh, maybe Zoe can, um, uh, with that much people. And we ask them to start with a story, simple stories, what made them proud of working in that company. And then we, we, we make them tell it uh, to everyone else. And then we dwell uh, how that impact, uh, how that story that made them proud had an impact on their customers. So we just dive deeper into the stories that were told because uh, if we are not uh, in the stories, uh, we are running some advertising workshop when they are going to say, oh, we are, uh, you know, this attribute because we think it's cool and they are just taking someone someone else's attributes but when they are when we are drilling down their stories then we can uh, get actually to their attributes to their um, verbs and uh, to their values of their of their company uh, so we uh, go go somewhere else from that point on and there is a great, I don't know, have you heard about Andy Cunningham? Cunningham, I think it's, uh, I don't know how it's pronounced. Uh, she, ha she has her consultancy in uh, the Bay Area. She was working with Steve Jobs and she invented this uh, DNA uh, uh, test or, or, uh, where she found out that every company has its own DNA and each company in the world can be uh, put in one to three places like it can be either mother or a mechanic or a um, uh, or a missionary so like all the companies in the world could be separated into in these three categories each of the categories has its own you know drilled down and um, after we we are finished it we finished with stories we go to this dna um, tests and then we we just continue drilling down to, to find who they are, who they truly are, because uh, we can see that some company, like they are mechanic, but they, they, they saw somewhere on the internet that it's cool to be customer centric, but they are not, uh, they, they, they don't have operations to be customer centric. And that's when we uh, run into a problem, a PR problem or however you a crisis, however you call it, um, because they, they don't uh, do things that uh, belongs to, to, to them. I think that's such a great point. I love the concept of a business DNA um, because when you look at it as a human, right, we all have unique DNA. Right? Yeah. So, and, and I see so often in my work is people trying to sound the same, right? Like 
because everybody needs to have an I help statement. Mm. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about that because that's all the rest. That's all I'll talk about for the rest of this series. But um, that's not the point, right? Like we don't all have the same DNA. We're not all supposed to look the same. We're not all supposed to sound the same. And every time we try to sound the same, then we're just one of many, right? Like, ooh. Is that what we're trying to be? Like, I'm not. I'm not trying to be one of many, right? Like, I'm trying to be Tracy. And there's one way that Tracy sounds. It's actually funny because I was, I was talking to a collaborator of mine this morning, and we were we were just setting up our profiles um, on this new community that we launched. And our both of our profiles sound very different. And I was like, well, mine sounds like me, <laughs> and yours sounds like you. <laughs> and and that's still. A, like template right like new people can come in and still copy that but because it's supposed to sound like you right and it's one of the whole purposes behind our community so it's actually a very good point um but it's not anybody else's job to sound like me it's not anybody else's job to come onto one of my lives and see like oh wow tracy's got so much enthusiasm i should just have that enthusiasm and then i'll get clients <laughs> like no no and this is what i always tell people like even if you like it about somebody else that doesn't necessarily mean that that's an authentic representation of you either. So it's finding those moments where you feel like you have that, that connection, that like higher vibration of like, whoa, this is like the best version of Tracy, right? And everybody has those moments, whether it's out walking your dog or sitting reading a book or playing a basketball game, right? Like whatever is the thing that you do, it just is like, that's you. Kate says it's exhausting being this enthusiastic all the time. I wouldn't recommend it to everybody. And here's the thing too, because from my perspective, I it's like I get energy from being enthusiastic, which maybe sounds weird. I get the same thing from my cardio dance class, right? Like I teach it for an hour and then I'm feeling like, whoa, that was awesome. I can do anything right now, right? And so like tap into, this is my tip for you guys, tap into those moments where you feel like, that 100% you and the first step to that is starting to pay attention. Pay attention. When, when do you feel good? When you feel good, notice, right? Don't let it flip by. There's so many things that can take you back to being pulled down and in the weeds, right? Like take a moment to celebrate like, wow, I'm just feeling like really great right now <laughs> and embrace it. Okay, um, Zoe is saying Strength Finders is the one test she highly recommends. I have taken Strength Finders. I especially like Strength Finders when you're in a team because it gives you really good understanding of people's strengths. And then you can also like, and not to say that their strengths won't change, um, but it gives you a good understanding right now of how to responsibly interact between personal brands. I just also think it allows you to know that you don't have to be brilliant at everything. And so it's great that we can reinvent ourselves, but it's also really nice to say like, oh, if I spend more time doing things I'm already good at, that's probably good for everyone. And like, I don't have to like be awesome at everything all the time. And that's just, it, it's liberating as Alexandra said. Like it's, yeah. it's like, oh, thank God I'm allowed to be good at something. I, that is so true. And because I think a lot of times in our past too, we were like, oh, I have these weaknesses. I should like work really hard to like get better. <laughs> Let's just figure out what your strengths are and put your energy into getting better at that. Because one, you get better at it much faster. <laughs> and two, like it just, it, those are the things that are more aligned with you, right? Like it's easier to do. So it's easier to do and you get it done faster. I'm all about efficiency. But then, okay. sorry, Rosalind, I just want to say, if one of your strengths is trying things you're not good at, then you have a strength in helping other people to explore things that they're not good at. Like, I don't know you or what your business is, but use that strength to help you shine a light on your brand. Like, I'm good at trying new things. Here's a story of me trying something new. That's part of your voice and part of how you express the value you offer because you're willing to take risks when other people aren't. And that's valuable to the right audience. Sorry, just had to say that. No, that's great. Did anybody else, I'm going to go back and address the other questions as well, but does anybody else want to address that question from Rosalind since we're at it already? What is she saying? What about if one of my strengths is trying things I may not be so good at? Anybody else? I think Zoe did a really good job. You're brave. You're so brave. 
And that's the thing, right? I think sometimes when it comes to us, we think that everybody's brave, right? Like, oh, everybody's just good at trying things they don't know. Woo, nope. <laughs> and Rosalind, I've known you for a while now too. And I would say that is definitely something that I have learned about you is you're so open to learning new things and trying new things. And quite honestly, for me, like that's one of the things that I love in my clients. Cause if you're not going to try something new, then hmm, you're probably going to stay stuck where you're at for a pretty long time. Uh, <laughs> it just gives you an opportunity to grow so fast. All right. I'm going to jump back to Sarah's question. Do you find that your ideal audience is already around you slash where you hang out online? Or did you have to spend some time finding them? But anybody like Zoe? Sorry, my company is called Schmooze for a reason. It means I like to talk. Um, not apologizing, actually. I love to talk. So just a Hi. Yeah. Um, so one of the things I found, Sarah, that I was going to tell you about regardless of if I had a chance to was that I was spending time in a room where I was the most interesting person. And that sounds like very conceited, but really I was like, I need to be in a room where other people are more interesting than me so that I can continue to level up. And so being honest about where you are and sort of saying, and maybe, and maybe that's not your strategy, but for me, I needed to be around people who um, had grown their business to a significant level. So again, you have to know where what your ideal, like, have you actually defined your ideal audience and, and said, you know, super specific 25 to 30 year olds who da, 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 and then maybe there's a space in place for that. And then, you know, for me, it was actually joining networking groups with like fancier than me CEOs who were going to probably be like, you're kind of cute and boring. And, and then I have to, I, I show them that that's not true, but, um, I found for me, it was saying, yeah, there's great people around me, but I had to go out and become uncomfortable to not be the most interesting person in the room anymore. And, and then, and then that just made my networking go bonkers. Amazing. Yes. Alexandra. And I can just add to Zoe because she perfectly said the, the, what she said um, that comes from, from this inside of you, uh, that, that Justine was uh, telling about. Uh, when you find your voice, when you find who you are and uh, what are you good at, and just start talking about it and don't pay attention to algorithms on, on social media, etc. Just talk what you are passionate about. And people who, who, who believe you, who believe you and who, who, who like what you say will like it. And then the algorithm will promote it to, 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 to their friends and your audience will grow naturally. And I, I really suggest you to, to do it naturally because you will hear the feedback and you will polish what you will polish back what you believe. And that this, uh, uh, beautiful collaboration between inner and outer outer world where you say who you are and then you listen how people react on what you said and then you polish it back and, and your audience naturally uh, grows. Kate's got something too. It's just a, a quick ad addendum to that which is when you're thinking about your your target audience and your ideal client and that kind of thing, it's not so much for me about the demographics. It's the psychographics. It's thinking about what are their goals? What are their motivations? Once you know those, you, you position yourself. You have your personal brand as the expert. You are the person that's going to help them solve that issue. You are the person who you know, they can work with you to do this. You're not going to have all the answers. That's, that's impossible to have all the answers, but you are going to help them on that journey. And if you can show that value, show them how you can help them meet their next milestone. Once you know what their goals and aspirations are, you will find those people, they will be around you. They might not be on a specific channel in exactly a specific group, but when you're out there, you're really sharing yourself out there those people will come around. You will find them. Sarah, I just want to know who, you, who you're looking for, but we'll, we can talk later. I'm just like dying to know. <laughs> I don't want to hear what Justine has to say too. 
Because what I was going to say, I think, is what Justine's going to say, but let's see. Well, I'm not sure, but it's pretty much um, wrapping up what, a little bit of what everybody said. Um, I always um, say, especially when working with, with, with groups and when, when working with companies, especially startups, everything starts with that clarity. You have to be so clear. And it's, it's amplifying what Zoe said. have to be so clear as to who it is that you want to speak to and what it is that your, that your message is. From that clarity, you need to be really consistent with your message, with your wording, and just speak it continuously. So it's almost like land that one sentence, you know, if I call it the elevator pitch, everybody probably knows that. It's like somebody at, you know, met you, it's like, what do you do? Or whatever the, the question might be. Be really, really concise and specific. And, and that's the best way to get to that sentence is by working with somebody. I couldn't even access it on my own. After years of doing marketing, it's having that reflection of somebody else playing those words back to you, then you hear them. You're like, actually, yeah, that sounds right. So work with somebody. I really encourage you, even if it's, even if it's a, a friend or you know, it doesn't have to be a professional, but just have somebody play that back to you. So clarity, consistency, can continuity with that same messaging. And it's through that when you constantly do that, with, um, you build confidence. And with that confidence, you become unstoppable. And it's with that, with that purity of your, your, your message, people are starting to hear it. You know, if, if somebody says to you, what are you doing? I, well, I kind of, um, you know, was used to, and now I... Okay, well, interesting, move on. I do this for people like this to help them. Sorry, Tracy, not to help them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like all of a sudden it's like, wow, okay, I want to talk to you more. The tribe, if you get that right, the tribe will find you because your message will be so clear that through all the clutter and stuff that's out there, they're going to hear you. I'm going to throw in one more quick thing, Sarah, before you have to run, because I know you have to go for me, but you know me, you've met me. So, you know, <laughs> I, for me, a really big piece of it is the energy, right? So there's energy that is created by words and there's energy with created about in how you show up and that energy attracts like energy. And those people are they're in your current social media network. They are on the same social media channel, not yet connected with you, right? Like they are around and being able to put the message out there. I mean, very simply, if you don't tell people who you are and what you're all about and who your people are, they can't find you. So it really is just in all of these things about being concise and specific and consistent and all of these things that everybody else shared too. But they just think about that energy, that energy where you love to exist and just be there. Sarah, before you go, also make sure that the people that you think you love also help you make money. And they can. This is a, not a like mutually exclusive, right? Like, yeah, like, like I some people hang out to me and will also pay you. Like, I love this audience. And I'm like, yeah, but they're screwing you financially. So you need to understand that data and understand that what serving them does to you and your business. So just be real, look at the data, understand your financials. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> as we speak all of these last things in okay there was also one more question that Rosalind had in relation to there's so many things here mm, where is it going off Sarah's question how do you find your ideal tribe uh, we might have covered a whole bunch of that in our conversation already is there any other last takeaways that you guys would share about finding your tribe surprise surprise Zoe I'm so sorry, but also so excited. I just have to continue what I was saying to Sarah, which is they're not your people if they're not valuing your services. So you think that, that that's who you want to serve. You, you think in your heart, like, I want to save the world or whatever it might be. If they cannot pay you for your services, you lowering yourself as your self-worth is not going to do anyone any favors. And there's somebody else who's worse than you doing that work for the 
for your ideal clients and ch charging three times the amount. I just like can't be on a call with a whole woman panel and not say that. It's great to have good energy. It is important to know your numbers and know your value. As, as Kate said, they're not your ideal client if they can't pay for your services and make you feel valuable. That's it. Yep. All the celebration on that. Thank you, Zoe. Any other comments? No, <laughs> that's a pretty good way to end it, Zoe, I'm going to say. That, and this is really the thing too, right, guys? Because it comes back to, we were talking about like confidence in your voice, right? Like at the end of the day, what we're talking about today is your voice, right? Like knowing your value makes a huge difference in how you show up to other people, right? You guys are here for a reason. People are doing great things. They need to know that you're doing that and they need to know the value associated with it. It's actually interesting that we end on this point because this is the challenge I gave my mastermind this week is like, show people your value because I don't want you discounting your services. No, stop it. <laughs> this is not the point. All of these things that you are doing are adding so, so much value. And as long as you keep devaluing it, your market will devalue it. You have, you have to own it you, and you have to tell people that and not like, I'm great, you should pay me this, right? Like, mm, no, <laughs> not in so many words, but that's what you need to know, right? That's what you need to know. But and also you, you are great and yes. you are worth this much money. So it's not like I, this cocky versus confidence thing, going back to that again, it's like such an interesting paradigm, especially as a strong woman to sort of be like, hey, if a man was going to do this and it was going to show up as confident, not cocky, why can't I do it? And I know that's bold and brash, but it's like, it's frustrating to me that we have to be gentle um, and we don't. Like that you can be whatever, like the point is you can be whatever you want. And if that's cocky to one person, well then they're not, as, as we've been saying the whole time, that's fine. They're not your person. Everyone on this call could think I'm obnoxious right now and mm -hmm. I don't care. Mm -hmm because I don't leave my kid in the care of somebody else to go not feel like myself every day. So go ahead and try and make me smaller. It's not gonna happen because I know what I need to do for myself to be happy at the end of the day, right? So, oh God, so all the feelings about this stuff. It's so important. It's so important to not try and make yourself smaller. Um, it's, it's just, it's just, I spent too many years doing it and it's more exhausting than actually allowing yourself to shine. It's, it's okay to shine, have fun, shine big. That is so true. And we, again, one of the reasons we want you guys to shine and what I want you guys to take away as well is that like there's five different voices on this call too, right? Like none of us sound exactly the same. We're all trying to empower you to have your voice, right? Like it doesn't have to sound like mine or Zoe's or the whole point is that it sounds different, right? But like own what that is for you and tell people it, <laughs> tell people it. And if you need a community of people to hang out with, because we're talking about ideal tribes, right? Connect with us on LinkedIn, connect with all of these ladies. Um, I'm sure everybody's kind of on Facebook too, but we mostly all connected on LinkedIn. Um, so reach out to us. We're, if you resonated with somebody's conversation today, reach out to them. I saw, uh, I saw some Sandra was saying, couldn't agree more, Kate, right? Sandra, Kate, get connected, <laughs> right? Like this is the other thing, like reach out to people who you feel connected to. Tracy, one of the compliments I want to give to you is from when the moment we met, you were like, this is not about competition between different marketers. This is about the fact that like Kate and Justine and Alexandra and Tracy and Zoe all have something to offer. And it's not a, like, who's the best on this phone call. We're all just different people. And Kate might be like a bajillion times better than me at something and Justine 8,000 times better than me at something else and me 20,000 times better. Like, it, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. And there's, so, it's like women can be so vicious to each other too. It's, it's like just enough of that. Like there's room for all of us to <laughs> thrive. Yeah. Thank you, Zoe. That is one of the things that I am trying to 
do with these panels. So uh, I'm really glad I realized that we are a little bit over. I really appreciate everybody's time. Zoe, Kate, Alexandra, Justine, you guys provided such great value for our audience today. Um, if you guys are watching this on the replay, let us know what you thought. Just share your thoughts. If you have any questions, connect with us on LinkedIn and, and ask your question. We will, are more than happy to answer anything that you have. I got hearts coming up all over the place. You guys, I'm so thankful that you guys agreed <laughs> to participate today. Um, and I hope everybody has a very, very fantastic March. Thanks everybody.